What's up guys, my name is Kamal and today I'm going to bring you another Path of Exile video. This one's going to be from the PC. I'm not on my PC or PS4 right now. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to read through these new patch notes. I figured I would hop on here. Uh, I, I guess, you know, they're not really patch notes. It's just an announcement. It's a big announcement. So Path of Exile Legion, super fucking awesome. Um, this information just came out yesterday. My computer was disassembled on my living room floor. So, yeah, I wasn't able to do any videos, but here we are now. Um, before I even jump into it, if you guys enjoy this, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, all that good shit. So, yeah, let's, you know what, I just realized that I've been recording this whole thing with OBS up. So let's, let's look into this. So Path of Exile Legion. Um, it is currently today, May 22nd, and here it is. This is what we've been waiting for. Um... You know, it's been about a month or so that we've known that this was going to be coming, that they were going to be doing a nice rework to some melee skills. Um, one of the things that I had wished for or predicted did come to fruition, and it, it looks like there were also a fair amount of nerfs to the NPCs, which I'm kind of feeling questionable about, but <clears throat> we'll, we'll see when the time comes. I... I'm very anti-nerf. Um, I typically don't like it when video game companies make th the game easier on people. I think that, and I'm just going to just throw this out there and then we'll carry on. Um, I think games should be difficult. I think there should be a difficulty to games. I think, I mean, if you look at the games that, that I grew up playing or people my age or even older grew up playing there wasn't really an easy mode um, things didn't get nerfed you played the game how it was and if it was too hard for you to beat it well it was too hard for you to beat it you either learn how to beat it or you play a different game that's just how it was so I I see when companies nerf things I typically see it as a come on Tell your players to just get better, um, and that's going to be with the NPC nerfs. But we'll we'll get into all that. Let's let's look through here. So, Path of Exile Legion, trapped for thousands of years in the domain of timeless conflict, the mightiest military leaders of Rayclass history have been fighting an eternal war. In Path of Exile Legion, you will free their legions from the endless battle and defeat them in combat to earn their valuable rewards. Path of Exile's June expansion contains the Legion Challenge League, new items, new gems, a game-wide overhaul of melee combat, and much, much more. One thing that I do really like is that, I mean, it's just barely two weeks away. Um, so yeah, you got two weeks to prepare for this. Uh, so... In this, they're going to go over each one. I'm just going to read all this through you, read through all of this for you, and then kind of give you my uh, opinion. Or maybe I'll give you my opinion as we go. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Y you know I don't write scripts. Most of the time, this is just me fucking getting on here talking. Um, so, Timeless Monoliths. As you explore Rayclass, the Legion League, in the Legion League, rather, uh, you'll discover monoliths. Tag these to reveal an ancient conflict between multiple legions. Freeze in time, or frozen, jeez, as you could tell I just woke up, uh, <laughs> untether monsters by dealing damage to them, but be prepared to fight those monsters when the effect of the monolith wears off. As certain monsters are powerful and drops valuable items, legion grants you full control over risk and reward. So what's happening in here, and you can see in these screenshots, it's looks fucking cool god look at that look at that man marauder straight man mode got duressos and everything um so you enter in these little things and they're all right here they're not moving um as you can see with these guys uh, don't worry about these ones quite yet we'll go over that in, a, in just a quick second but these guys how you see they're not all moving you go in they're all frozen um you go around you damage them all and then you hit the monolith and then they all wake up the ones that you've damaged they wake up and then you have to kill everything there's barrels that you can break down um it, it goes over it in the announcement trailer it, it seems really unique and really cool i'm interested to see how it works um i have a feeling that it should actually work out pretty well um i think that the fairly simplistic nature of it is going to be really good coming off of the 
the back of synthesis. Synthesis was a very deep knowledge-based league, I would say, because there, I mean, yeah, of course, you could not worry about it and just kind of plow through stuff, but there was also a very, very intricate crafting, um, oh, I can't even think, aspect, there we go, that was added with synthesis, and it made it to where you really should run synthesis but nobody really wanted to, or at least not a large amount of people really wanted to. And I think this, though, you're still going to have the ability to get these uh, these cool, unique rewards, which I'll, I'll show you in a second, but it's different. There, There's not... It's not going to be as... I guess... prominent... Um, I, I I just woke up uh, <laughs> once again, so I'm trying to formulate all these thoughts, but there were a group of people in Synthesis that had a very, very deep knowledge of how the system worked, and they used that to craft incredibly powerful items and almost game the crafting system in a sense. And the people that understood, I don't even know if you guys can hear it, but my lungs are fucking whistling because they're all fucked up. <laughs> um, but if you understood how the synthesis system worked, you could kind of game it and really, really, really make yourself a huge benefactor of the system. Not a lot of people either understood how it worked or liked how it worked. Like, I kind of had a rough idea of how synthesis worked but i didn't find it entertaining i don't find it enjoyable i don't really find it fun um i don't see the same issue coming from this one because it seems like you just kill everything if there's there shouldn't be the same issues that we saw with synthesis as far as the super in-depth crafting which is good but at the same time it's a double-edged sword um you know it's good and bad but i'm i'm not i'm not gonna keep yapping your off We're, we'll see we'll see and uh, i figure we'll make a, des a decision then on how much better or worse but i'm assuming a lot better it'll be um the domain of timeless conflict enemies from each of the five legions drop splinters which combine together to form an emblem of that legion. Place two or more emblems from different legions in a map device to gain access to the domain of timeless conflict, where the eternal battle uh, between these legions rages. Unlock the upgraded map device in order to fight the ultimate conflict between five legions, or all five legions. Whoa, that's fucking cool again. All right, not gonna lie, that looks super fucking dope. Yeah, that looks fucking awesome. Ah, here's the map device. So, you put one of each, and then I'm assuming just another map, and then run it. Place two or more different emblems in a map device to access the domain to the timeless conflict. That's pretty cool. Go in and fight the two like, in the middle of a war. Play for honor. For honor in the middle of a <laughs> fucking Path of Exile. Uh, so these are the new items. I, the new item rewards. There's new... I tried highlighting it. Can't highlight it. Um, uh, new unique rewards that, that come from this legion. Um, so it says some legion monsters display symbols indicating the specific items they drop. Skilled players will focus on freeing the monsters that maximize the type of reward they are seeking. Certain types of monsters can drop incubation items, which modify a piece of equipment to guarantee a certain reward after you've killed a specific number of monsters. So it looks like um, incubating a unique weapon. So I'm not sure what that's saying if you're like, let me see, some Legion monsters display symbols 
indicating the specific items they drop. Skilled players will will focus on freeing the monsters that maximize the type of rewards they are seeking. Certain monsters can drop incubation items, which modify a piece of equipment to guarantee a certain reward. Oh, wait. Oh, that's fucking cool. Okay. So, I could be wrong. And I think I could be. But, what I'm understanding, or what I feel to be what they're saying here, if I have this uh, Nagamahu's Flame Abyssal Axe equipped, after I kill a total of 2,000 monsters, I will obtain an additional unique item. Just like with this, let's just adds an incubated Harbinger item to an equipment item. Item drops after, okay, yeah. I should have read this first. So it quite literally makes it to where if you use this item, so let's say you have a, a Cyclone Marauder, which would be a very, very fucking smart thing to do in the next uh, league, uh, especially this one. I have a feeling this build is going to be insanely strong, but you kill a certain amount of enemies and you get an additional piece of loot. That's pretty fucking badass to be honest i i kind of glanced over this and was just kind of like ah whatever i don't see what it's supposed to do um but now that i'm actually looking at it that's really really that's yeah that's awesome so legion jewels these are new things that completely modify uh the passive tree in a certain area so let's let's go over what it does these ones are all unannounced there is one that's announced and yeah, so it says, from each of the five legions, it's possible to earn a special unique jewel that can be socketed into your passive skill tree. Each of the five jewels modifies nearby passives in different ways, providing completely new character customization options if you are skilled enough to acquire one. So this says, bathed in the blood of 5,173 sacrifices sacrificed in the name of Doriani. Passives in the radius are conquered by Val Historic. And, you know, they're showing a little... Uh, they're showing the tree, but I don't, I don't know what it's actually doing, what changes it's making. Um, now, I know that these are obviously supposed to be strength. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. So these gems, you guys just saw it. That's, that's how thoughts formulate in my mind. I hope that was entertaining for you. Um, so these gems, you take them and you put them into an open slot in your passive skill tree, and it legit changes every single passive in the radius to a specific type. Wow. Um, <laughs> that can... <laughs> um, that could be really fucking good. Depending on what they give us, that could be a complete game changer. And running around with fucking, like, 15,000 health. 20,000... Jesus Christ. This is insane. Uh, so that's cool. I like that. I'm not mad about that. Well, let's see. It says melee combat revamp. I don't want to spend too much time on on uh, <laughs> on <clears throat> any individual item. So we've addressed most of the core issues with melee combat in Path of Exile. You can now cancel attack animations after they deal their damage. That's pretty cool. Um, so attack damage has been dealt. You can start moving around without having to wait for the entire animation to conclude, which can hurt you sometimes. So that's that's really cool. Uh, movement skills are now all instant, 
and new low-level movement skills have been added for many classes. So these are both very, very awesome things. Do you know what pisses me off about Flame Dash? The fact that it feels like I like, hey, I have to, I have to ready myself to Flame Dash, and then the Flame Dash happens. This is going to make it to where they're all instant. There's no like. If you notice with uh, like Whirling Blades, it almost looks like like your character gets into position to spring off. You know, it's almost like there's a there's a load and explode with with whirling blades and with most movement skills so that's amazing because in a game like this especially if you're playing on playstation you'll understand this a fucking millisecond of hindrance can cause everything to go wrong and it's very frustrating uh the playstation I don't play the game as much as I would like because of the amount of lag that's in the game and the amount of issues I have trying to play. And it's very upsetting. Um, I, I want to spend hours and hours and hours every day playing this game, but the amount of server lag that I get playing on PlayStation makes it to where I spend most of my days just sitting around wishing that Path of Exile worked properly. Um, and this is something that isn't, <clears throat> isn't going to fix the lag. But should make it, hopefully, where you can get out of the shit quicker before the lag kills you. Hopefully. Remember, everything in all my videos are my opinion. If you don't agree with it, that's fine, but you're probably wrong. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all melee attacks can now hit multiple adjacent enemies. This is actually something that I went over on a live stream, and I think I may have mentioned it in my hopes for 3.7. I think that this is extremely powerful. Um, most spells have some sort of native splash or AOE or something that damages multiple enemies. Attacks don't really have that. Melee attacks don't really have that very much. And so what I said was, you know, if, if they went through and just every attack skill got like a native multi-strike, like you, not even just multi-strike, just a native splash damage, you know, just something, just add melee splash to each attack gem, and that would really be the big rework that melee needs, you know, ancestral spirit, add that, I think it's called ancestral spirit, whatever, it, it just, the single target is not really something that works well in a game like this, and that's exactly what they've done, so that's amazing that's super fucking awesome i'm really happy about that uh, the animation system has been overhauled the monster targeting rules improved so that's good and accuracy is no longer capped at 95 cent 95 percent oh my god <laughs> i won't have to use i'll be able to actually do a, a fucking crit marauder build now that's amazing i've always gone with uh i believe it's resolute is it resolute yeah, Resolute Technique, where never miss, so 100% hit chance, but you can also never crit, and that sucks. This being removed will allow us to do, you know, our always hit crit marauders, which will be awesome. Uh, there are more changes to melee combat than are possible to list here, uh, but these changes, plus a rebalance of most melee skills, create an entirely new combat experience. Uh, new build archetypes. Some of these look moderately interesting. Um, but I think it's something that we're not going to be able to tell until we really, really see it in front of us. And God damn. We can hold it in our hands. 
Uh, the new Blood and Sand Gladiator archetype can switch between Blood Stance and Sand, sand Stance, dynamic, dynamically modifying the function of new and existing skills. The new Rage Berserker archetype revamps the Rage system and introduces new skills that generate or consume Rage. These powerful archetypes and their new skills offer additional options uh, for many for many Path of Exile builds. Now, as you can see right here, the Blood and Sand, it just lets you use the Blood or the Sand, um, changing how the abilities work or what the side effects of those abilities are based on what it is. I mean, this is something... I'm, I'm going to have to have it in my hands before I can really gauge because I mean it could be cool uh, I, this is something that's really awesome rage doesn't damage you anymore uh, so having rage won't have a, a damage over time like constantly losing life there is the ability I, and I don't know if they go over this um, rage a stacking buff that gives powerful attack bonuses and no longer has a downside. Yeah, so it doesn't take uh, your life away, but there is ability in Berserker that allows you to do this for bonuses. It makes you stronger, but still damaging you. This, this is what I was talking about. This is the the nerf that I don't know how I feel about. So it says early game monster rebounds. With all the melee combat improvements, players can now dodge out of the way of attacks easily. We have taken advantage of this by rebalancing monster attacks that have to use poor signaling to now have a wind-up. This rebalance extends to improving monster AI and boss fights throughout the early campaign. So what it's saying is now that it's easier for people not to get hit, we're also going to make it harder for the boss to hit you. Now, the reason that I have an issue with that is if you're having problems in the early game of Path of Exile, you should probably look at how you're playing and not how strong the monsters are. You should be able to very easily walk through the beginning of the game. <clears throat> now, is there some cunt shit where you get frozen in place and that sucks? Yeah, it happens. Deal with it. I don't really know what to tell you. Get a freezing potion. Get a potion that breaks you from freezing. Is there some stuff where you get stunned by lightning damage and it's, it's really fucked up and it's annoying? Yeah sucks get a shock potion i don't i mean early game simplification it's not it's not good for the community i don't think people don't have an issue in the beginning of the game if somebody has an issue in the beginning of the game what the hell do you expect them to do once they get to act seven if someone cannot competently walk through the first five acts of the game they are definitely not going to be able to walk through the second five and making the the beginning of the game easier on people i don't think that that's really something that's going to help people it's not it's not not in the way that they should be helped it'll help people get through the early game and then once they get into the late game where you can't rely on ggg making the game easy for you they're not going to keep playing Now, this is my opinion, but I've seen many other games follow suit with something similar to this, making the making the earlier levels of the beginning of the game a bit more easier to understand, a bit more simple, and it doesn't work. Um, I mean, making it simpler, yeah, making it easier, yeah, making it work for newer players, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but they're not. you're not going to retain more people doing that. Um, you know, because early game monster rebalance means that for the first three hours, if you're slow, 
Uh, well, I shouldn't say if you're slow. Three hours if you're not trying to quickly progress through everything is going to be easier. Now, there's already a fairly massive skill ramp when it comes to Path of Exile. And all this is going to do is make that the one big hump. It's just going to be two, you know? And that's all. It's just going to make it to where, okay, let's say, let's say they consider early game up to Act 3. So at Act 3, the monsters are going to not be so nice anymore. I don't know. I just... I mean, I could be wrong. It's, it's, I, I could be completely wrong on all this. Good morning. But I feel like making the early game easier for people is not going to make more people play the game or play for longer. And that's just my opinion. Uh, if I'm wrong, let's talk about it. You know, fuck, join the Discord. Let's talk about it. Powerful new items. Alongside 14 new Divination cards, Path of Exile Legion contains 12 new unique items uh, for you to discover. In addition, we have chosen 15 existing unique items that are themed around Legion's five armies and have rebalanced them so that they have become powerful rewards to find in the new league. So let's look at this. This is a chess piece that I actually have used for a while. Um, Inner Conviction. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what any of these other ones are. Or what the added uh, thing to them are. Oh, okay, that's what this one is. That's cool. Your raised zombies count as corpses. That's pretty dope. And raised zombies does not require a corpse. That's really good. Holy shit. Okay. Unaffected by poison. Wow. Oh. Uh, inner conviction, if I'm not mistaken, is... Instead of Frenzy, you gain power? Or instead of power, you gain Frenzy? It's one of those. This is something I'm really excited about. <laughs> Ten Exalted Orbs from a card. Now, I play on PlayStation, so it would be super awesome to get seven of these and get Ten Exalted Orbs. Um, but with the way that the PlayStation market is, with those 10 Exalted Orbs, I could get, like, you know, maybe a Duresso's Helm. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, a PlayStation market is fucked. Uh, this is probably going to make it a bit worse. But we'll see. Um, the The trade market is ridiculous on PlayStation. I I don't see this helping it, but it'll give you the opportunity to go out and you know get some exalted orbs. That way you can buy some gear. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, this this was just my one over of the patch three point seven. If you enjoyed this video, like I said, consider liking it, consider subscribing to it. Um, you know, there's a Patreon, there's PayPal, there's all that shit, but I don't expect you guys to give me money that way. That'd be silly. Um, it's just there if you feel the urge to. I can't wait. 16 days away, I mean, and, and counting. Also, I almost forgot to mention, I got in to the... World of Warcraft uh, stress test today. So I'm going to be doing that here in the next uh, five hours. I'll be I'll be hopping on there. I'm going to try to stream it. I've been having some issues with my computer. Um, I need a new motherboard and a new processor and then I'll be good. Uh, but we're going to try to make it work and I'll try to get some footage out of the World of Warcraft uh, classic beta stress test hopefully i get into the actual beta afterwards so yeah i'm out of here guys i hope you enjoyed the video peace